Hey guys, it's Ben with Design3 here, and I'm talking to Charlie Cleveland, Game Director at Unknown Worlds Entertainment, and let's get started. So when did you first start playing video games, and uh, what are some of your favorite all-time games? Gosh, um, let's see, I played, I guess I've been playing video games since I was a teenager, probably actually a little earlier, like Super Mario, yeah. kind of that era, NES era, shows my age. Um, and... Uh, Gosh, yeah, I guess my favorite games, uh, probably more like the RTS style and FPS games. StarCraft, Gloom is a classic that I kind of really got me excited. Fighting games, actually the Mortal Kombat games. Uh, anything multiplayer kind of focused is probably my favorite. Awesome. Yeah, but I also played a lot of like board games, role-playing games, right, like traditional right. paper role-playing games, yeah. and uh, chess and like that whole spectrum. Nice. Not just video games, but yeah, that's good. like at games in a bigger context. Yeah, a lot of people don't really think of board games as being you know, kind of related to game design. Oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah. For me, board, the board game field, especially the kind of European board games, are super interesting design-wise. Nice. Yeah. And how did you uh, get, first get started in video game development? So, um, actually, when I was in college, um, I on the, for summers, uh, I didn't want to go get like a regular job. So um, I actually just would get together with my friends mm -hmm. and we'd rent a, a couple times we rented a house for the summer and we just said, okay, like we saved up enough money, like we're just gonna spend a couple months and try making a game. And we had no idea how to do that. We were just like, you know, let's just figure out a way to make this work and you know, uh, we'll all be at the house and we'll all, you know, some people will be programming, some people will be, you know, want to be an artist so they start doing art. Yeah. and. Uh, and we just had three months set aside where we could basically do it for full time. And, you know, cooking together and just like all in pretty much in one tiny apartment. Right. Um, and just started, you know, That's started, awesome. you know, creating narratives and drawing maps and on paper and uh -huh. coming up with design ideas and quick little like graphics demos. And this was before, I mean, this was like, you know, the mid 90s. Mm -hmm. So it was like, there wasn't that much technology to, to be done, actually more like the early 90s. Um, it wasn't like we had like an engine we could just go download and start playing with. Right. It's like, let's program in mode X and see if we can get triangles on the screen. Right. Or, yeah. yeah. So uh, what is the current project you guys are working on? So uh, we are like a small independent studio, game studio. We have seven people here. Uh, we're working on a game called Natural Selection 2, which is a first-person shooter, real-time strategy hybrid for the PC, online, on Steam, multiplayer only, on our own tech. And uh, yeah, we've been working on that for almost three years, like, full-time. So Natural Selection was a mod, and Natural yep. Selection 2 is being developed as a commercial game. Yep. Can you talk about that kind of transition from going to modding to commercial? It's been painful and long. <laughs> um, it sounded so good in paper, on paper and in my mind. Oh, we'll just make a transition from a mod to a company. Right. Easy, right? We have a popular mod, let's just, I don't know, make a company. Um, so the things that worked really well for that uh, have been, be because we have a big audience, you know, be because we made a popular mod, that audience is a huge resource for us, mm -hmm. and we rely on that for all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. Everything from PR to uh, you know, our funding has largely come from our audience. You know, we've, most of the funding for our company has come through player donations and pre-orders, the vast majority of it. Um, recently, we've been relying on them for bug fixes and things because of the way we're, we have kind of this open nature to our codes. So people can actually just send changes. They're like, oh, we liked how this worked in NS1. It's not working this well in NS2. I just like changed the script and here's the here's the script you can check in if you want. And we're like, thanks. You know, I've even had like bug fixes over Twitter, wow. which have been pretty awesome. Like, <laughs> oh, by the way, I think you meant this. And you're like, ah, oh, that's why it hasn't been working. <laughs> so we, we rely on our community for that. Um, so that's been one really positive aspect of moving from a mod to a, a kind of a traditional game company in some ways. Um, wait, wait, so your question was, what is, how has that process worked? Yeah. Mod how, to company? Yeah, how's it been going? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, I guess I don't even know how to answer that. It's, well, could it's not traditional. It's not traditional right, right. migration. People do it, and we've seen, you know, Min Lee for Counter-Strike, he's doing it. Mm -hmm. He did it a different way. 
Um, we've seen like the Dota creators, they do it in a totally different way. They yeah. either go work at a company and then kind of bring their IP along with them. Right. So for us, we've just been you know, kicking and screaming the whole way, like committed to making NS2 a great game and trying to figure out how we're going to make the finances work to support that. Right. And so, we, yeah, we've been leaning on our community in a big way and learning like crazy because it's totally different than making a mod. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about having you know both first-person shooter and real-time strategy mixed together in one game and kind of how that development has gone? Yeah, um, that's... You know, that's my passion, is seeing those two together. Right. And not just because they're, it's like, hey, isn't that technically cool? Like, we can take two genres and blend them together. Wouldn't that be, like, what if? No, I, for me, the reason I'm so excited about that is I, I know that it's a, mostly the social dynamics where you have a commander who's, like, the commander's actions of building stuff and researching stuff will affect the players on the ground, mm -hmm. and it's really dramatic. And the players on the ground are like executing orders for the commander, and I just love that interplay where, you know, like you're on the ground, you're hurt, and a med pack comes down, and you realize, oh, the commander just did that for me, <laughs> or uh, you know, I'm going to help the commander build this, and then in NS1, the commander like bought me this weapon, you know, this kind of this this direct like carrot and stick thing right. that was really fun, and I think players like that bond between the different. Uh, player roles and you know gameplay types. Mm -hmm. They like the. Uh, they just they like seeing diverse, or I guess I like seeing diverse players come together and interact in a shared experience. So, but if I didn't love it, I would say that it may not be worth it because right. it's really it's a tough marriage. It's a it's a delicate balance between the two, and a lot of things that make an RTS fun make an FPS terrible, and vice versa. So, uh, you know, for instance, uh, in a strategy game, you want a commander to be able to execute a plan. Mm -hmm. The commander comes, comes up with a strategy and then, you know, decides, oh, I want to, like, rush or I want to, like, only use this type of technology. But players on the ground, they're like, I love using shotguns. I don't want to use grenade launchers or I don't want to do nothing and tech up while you're teching up and then wait for some toy later. Like, I'll leave the server. So we, it's a balance between allowing players to play they, the way they want to and allowing a, like kind of a high-level strategy game to develop mm -hmm. and the commander's plans yeah. to be present. Um, that goes in pretty nicely into the next question. Is okay, how, yeah. how important is the community of people around a video game? Yeah, um, I'm sure it, it changes for different games. Yeah. Um, for maybe for your game. For our game, it's yeah. crucial. Right. We're on PC, we're on Steam. We're supporting modding in a huge way. We really want those people to be making mods for our game and making new games. So for us, community is absolutely unbelievably important. For maybe an Xbox Live arcade game, like, you know, I'm not really sure community is going to help you too much. Right. So, or maybe even your average Steam title, probably not, probably not that big of a deal. So it's really, it depends on what your focus is. For us, we want players to, to create, so we need them involved. And we rely on them for so many other things. <laughs> okay. So, we, yeah, it's really important to us. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so if you had to sum up video game design and development oh, in just yeah. one word, <laughs> yeah. what word would that Gosh, be? Gosh, I guess I'm going to have to go with relentless. It's relentless. Okay. In it all relentless. the good and bad. <laughs> it does not let up. <laughs> all of it. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for your time. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks interview. for taking your time. Yeah.